Good afternoon and welcome to this next episode of Governance Headlines, a program I'd be pleasure to host. My name is Elisa Cole and I'm the Managing Director of Governance Center. And in this week's episode, I would like to speak to you about uh, a particular episode that has occupied uh, the financial press uh, this week, um, and that is the Credit Suisse uh, controversy, where the shareholders have requested to uh, relieve the chairman of the board risk committee of his duties effective uh, immediately. And I would like to talk to you about this case uh, for a number of reasons, in particular because it is quite rare for shareholders to request uh, the removal of one board member when he was not uh, directly tied or implicated in a particular scandal or situation uh, and when there is not um, a question of a normal process of renewal of the board. So what has led to uh, shareholders requesting the removal of Andreas uh, Gosling, who's been uh, the chair of the risk committee of uh, Credit Suisse since 2018? Well, first of all, it seems uh, that there has been already some pressure following a number of cases with um, or issues with, with Canadian companies like uh, Canada Goose, where Credit Suisse lost about 16 million um, after it was a left holding block of shares uh, in the clothing company when the stock uh, price uh, plummeted. And there was another, um, a couple of other cases where, uh, where Credit Suisse had paid um, in terms of its uh, inability to monitor important risks. But in this particular case, we're talking about a few billion dollars. Um, and let me give you a, a couple of details. First of all, uh, the, Archegos, uh, uh, the Archegos Capital family office uh, fiasco is, stands to, to cost Credit Suisse in the order of 4.7 billion. And uh, the uh, soft bank Greens Hill, who is also uh, gone um, uh, essentially insolvent, uh, is, is also costing the um, Credit Suisse around $3 billion in, 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 in sort of losses. So shareholders have quite uh, some reason to, to look at whether risk management practices at the level of the board were um, sufficiently rigorous. And uh, by the way, what merits to be discussed is that uh, the board's role in risk oversight over the last couple of years has um, increased immensely. And that has happened, as we all know, following the uh, last financial crisis where uh, the Basel Committee, for example, has required a, a board level risk committee um, it to be introduced in financial sector institutions. But what has happened in other institutions is also interesting. Um, at the level of uh, OECD member countries, of course, we know that the audit committee has and will probably forever be uh, the pinnacle or sort of the standard uh, committee, the, the most requested or recommended committee by securities regulators or central bankers, um, as well as nomination and remuneration and other committees, but also uh, board responsibility for risk uh, oversight. And I'm specifically saying risk oversight and not risk management, because those are two different functions, is increasing being stressed. So in about 60% um, of the um, um, jurisdictions um, in OECD member countries, um, regulators mandate the audit committee or a separate risk committee to have a specific responsibility for oversight of uh, risks at, at, the, at the board level. Um, and so we are seeing um, a number of regulators sort of look at board responsibilities um, in risk oversight and specifically giving more responsibilities to boards in, in this regard. And of course, um, in the current uh, circumstance um, following this year of COVID, uh, a number of emerging risks, whether we're talking about environmental risks or supply chain risks, are emerging and boards are having to cope with um, addressing or supervising this risk, these risks at the, at the board level. So definitely what we're seeing is a, is a great pressure on boards in, in, this, um, in this regard. But I think the interesting question is, how do we get to a situation where shareholders are actually asking for removal of the, um, of the chair of a risk committee? Because let's face it, that situation would be, is uh, today by all standards quite rare, unless a board member is directly implicated in a particular scandal, whether it's a related party transaction or other, it's rare that shareholders, you know, um, zoom in on a particular board member unless there are um, there is a process of, for example, institutional investment engagement um, in replacement of some of the board members as part of a stewardship campaign, as I will be discussing in um, an episode of Governance Dialogues dealing with um, Calster's uh, campaign against ExxonMobil. But this particular case is, is, not, is quite different um, in, 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 in the sense that shareholders are reacting to an episode that has happened uh, with the loss or impact on shareholder value and essentially 
um, saying that we would like to attribute this uh, blame, so to speak, to the chair of the Risk Committee, who should have known better. And I think this uh, particular episode opens an interesting uh, door to a conversation that has so far not really um, transpired in the corporate governance debate and in the corporate boardrooms, is to what extent we can apportion uh, responsibility to specific board members that were charged with specific tasks, you know, whether it's nomination, remuneration, a board oversight, if there is a problem with uh, remuneration, nomination practices at a certain company, shall the chair of the nomination remuneration committee be then um, uh, targeted by shareholders? Would be uh, you know a logical uh, question if we if we take this um, um, this momentum or this um, example of Credit Suisse as a, as an indication of a broader uh, approach that shareholders may take. Um, so far, we have not seen this kind of individualist or individual uh, approach where shareholders are targeting board members. But I think um, the reason I've decided to zoom into this particular case of Credit Suisse is that it raises a number of interesting questions uh, beyond uh, the case of this particular company around shareholders targeting uh, board members or chairs of board committees who um, uh, should have had an explicit responsibility for certain areas uh, of oversight and who have failed in, in, um, in performing them. So I think um, it's, it's an interesting new area of, of, um, of research and, and of thinking. And in the, in the coming years, certainly, as I said, with the growing responsibility uh, of boards for risk oversight, we'll be seeing uh, perhaps more cases where shareholders are uh, being more specific about who they would like to replace in the board following uh, particular corporate governance failings. Thank you for joining us uh, today in this episode of Governance uh, Headlines. And for those of you who are interested in these conversations, please feel free to um, tune in to our sister program, uh, Governance Dialogues, where I'm also focusing on some company-specific cases, uh, such as ExxonMobil. Thank you. Mm -hmm.